Have you guys ever tried using the vector tools that are built into Clip Studio Paint? Maybe you didn't even know we had vector tools in CSP. I'm gonna show you guys how to use those tools today. First, we need to know that raster layers and vector layers are different. A vector layer allows us to edit lines after they've been drawn. Roster layers are what we normally use in Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop, Procreate, and apps like that. Um, apps that use a lot of vector layers like Adobe Illustrator have different tools that are super specialized and we're gonna get into Clip Studio's version of those as well. To make a new vector layer, you can click on this little icon. You can click on layer, new layer, new vector layer. Or you can tap and hold on any layer in the layer stack, right click if you're on the PC and use the same selection path there. There's a little menu that pops up. I just leave the defaults and hit okay. Now that we've got our vector layer in the stack, we can use any pen in Clip Studio and even custom ones on these layers. So far, I haven't had any weird issues with any of the pens that I've tried. Um, but of course, let me know in the comments if you have. Here's a few different pens we're gonna try out today. Some of them have the smoothing on and some of them don't. That makes a difference with how many points you're gonna have in your vector. You can adjust those after the fact and I'll show you how to do that. But if you have the smoothing on, you'll get less points over the line. One of the limitations of vector layers in Clip Studio Paint is you can't color or fill. So you can see when I try to use the fill bucket, I get the little X'd out circle to indicate that's not available. This is where we locate the correct line tool. This is the most important tool for editing these vector layers after the fact. There's a bunch of different sub tools under that that we're gonna go through. So really quick, control point, that's gonna let us move control points, add control points, delete control points, switch to corner, adjust line width, adjust opacity, which I have no idea how to use, and split line. Pinch vector line is gonna let you grab any of those points without going into the control points and just kind of move it around. Simplify line is what we kind of talked about a minute ago, which is how you clean up a line after you've already drawn it and there's too, too many points, you can go ahead and use simplify line and it will cut the number down. It makes it a lot easier to edit because you're not just like trying to grab one teeny tiny little point at a time. Connect vector line, that basically is self-explanatory. It lets us take two points, stick them next to each other, and then it connects them. Adjust line width, that is the only one that works on roster layers as well. But basically what you do is it's kind of a brush size tool and you just run it over an area of the line that you wish to either narrow or thicken depending on the sub tool uh, settings I guess so you go into the settings and you choose thicken or narrow and then you choose by what point value you wish to do that and then you basically just brush over the area until you like the point it kind of gives you a good um, method for tapering the ends of lines and stuff like that if you have a line that you're not happy with Redraw vector line, I don't use this very often because most of the time I can just kind of manipulate the points to where I want it. But basically lets you use your mouse cursor as a brush and kind of like move the line around, redraw it into a different format. Redraw vector line width, again, this can be used to kind of taper the ends and stuff like that. This one's a little bit finicky and I don't use it a ton, but it's there if you want it. <laughs> Under control points, if you go into the subtool settings, you can see there's a bunch of different options in there. Sometimes you'll get weird little artifacts that you want to clean up, or maybe you didn't want the end to taper like that. You can come in here to delete point and you can kind of delete any weird artifacts. And then you can delete the little last point on the end of this and it will snap it to basically a rounded end. Move point and add point will let you move existing points around. Um, move point won't let you add new points unless you select add point, but add point will do move points job also, which is a really weird, <laughs> I don't know. I leave it on add point. Um, you can switch anything you want to corners with switch corner. It switches to a cornered Bezier curve instead of a rounded Bezier curve. If we click over onto each of these different lines, even the custom brushes, you can see that they all have the same control points available. 
even like pencil brushes and stuff like that. These lines on the bottom were quicker than the zigzaggy one. So you can see the zigzag one has a lot more points in it. The faster and smoother you do your lines, the less control points that there will be that are like crowding up the space. This is sort of the normal workflow I would use when using a vector layer to do my line art. First, you're gonna do a sketch on a raster layer and then you're gonna line on a vector layer. And then you go through and adjust everything the way you want it. You don't have to rasterize your line art. You can just set it as a reference layer. And then you're gonna go ahead and color it in. You can select cut and paste pieces of the vector line art onto new layers and they will automatically become vector layers. And then you can go ahead and select around them, go to edit and then convert to drawing color. You have to change the color first, obviously, but convert to drawing color will basically change that line art color for you to um, not black if you've inked the whole thing in black. It took me a second and also looking that up to figure out how to do it. <laughs> I also will come back after I've colored on a layer under and do a new raster layer on top of everything and add like my details and stuff that I didn't need to be vectored. You can do these all in a vector layer so that they're like super, super clean. I like my work to have like a little bit of texture to it sometimes, a little bit of wobble. It just makes it feel a little bit more like me and less kind of sterilized, I feel like. Um, the tendency with vector layers just as a whole is you're trying to get it as like clean as possible. That can sometimes lead to line art that's a little too sterile. I didn't really do it on this one, but another good use for the vector layer is text. If you want to be able to clean up and perfect text really easily, a vector layer is a really good way to do that, especially if you're into font making. So I'm just kind of converting the color on this one so that it goes with the eyeballs. <laughs> then I'm gonna go ahead and use the layer properties from our easy parallel lines video a little while back and give that like a little outline. You could do some really fancy things with this text, but this was just kind of a quick demo sticker. You can see you can still select and move and transform these vector layers and the control points will just move with them. And then we just need to add a little white background around the outside to make it kind of look like a sticker and be printable. And then we can send it to the silhouette cutter. And that's the basics of vector layers. Please put any comments or questions down in the comments below. I'd be happy to research and answer any of those that I can. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. If you're looking for more content like this, check out my videos on coloring faster in Clip Studio Paint and how to use layer masks. As always, this video and all of my other projects are brought to you by my wonderful patrons, Jesse C, Anthony Jutz, and Tara Billy Jean. Thank you guys so much. You can support the channel by subscribing, commenting, and liking the video, as well as on Patreon, Instagram, or Twitter. See you guys next time.